The human xylophone, another fantastic activity that your kids are going to love. I do this kind of like as a pre-composition activity so they can hear it first before they go and try and write it down, either in solfege or in notes. Um, <clears throat> let me not move you around, maybe a two, four, five. Um, now let, let's do eight people. Come to the front real quick. If you feel I can hold one pitch, come, come up quick, quick, quick. And stand in a, in, in a straight line. Where is do? This is too much fun because um, the, invariably the kids will give you more and more ideas. Can't we do this, Miss? Let's try this. Can we do this song? And so it'll go on. But I'll show you all the kinds of things you can do. Now you might think, well, what about the rest of my students? Trust me, they sit there and they're all ears. Or you can double up and just make the, be, the, the, the staves longer. And you can have more people mm -hmm. on your me staff or on your so that you have three or four people and everybody has to then sing that pitch. But let's show this. Let's just hear our scale if we have singers that are suitable. <clears throat> I'm a flutist. Okay, then. <laughs> <laughs> Do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti, do, do, ti, la, so, fa, mi, re. Do, Hold your note, do, mi. Hold your note. Hold your note. Bravo! <laughs> so we have the first little steps of harmony. The, it, it, could you see how the, that basic chord was, is formed on a xylophone or on a piano? Skip, skips, and then there's two people to skip. Do at the top. And that is, of course, a chord. We know how that works, right? Domi and so belong to the chord. He's just doubling up what she's doing, right? Let's have the dominant chord, dominant seventh. So, so That's the dominant seventh, right? <laughs> <laughs> Are you going to resolve or not? Yeah. <laughs> okay, and... Okay, so you have to now, they get so used to it if they know which chord they belong to that you can call the chord and now they will come up. So, let's do that. I'll call the chord. We'll do one, two, five, one. One is do, mi, so, two is uh, re, fa, la, five, seven is this odd little group <laughs> and then we'll end on the do, mi, so, do. Okay, tiny chord one. So two. Dominant seventh. So Do. 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 Mi so do. Okay. So with that activity, it's wonderful to start teaching kids. Um, harmony, one more activity. So let's say we want them to compose. And they have already written notes down. Like a me, a do, like with a bean, back the hopscotch exercise. Then take the child's exercise and say, right, we've, we made this from your hopscotch exercise. Let's see what it sounds like. Okay, me, and then we had a fa, and then the human xylophone actually sings it. Or you can project it so that they can see it and sing it from the projection. Or you can let them discover uh, melodies. Let's see. Um, who knows this melody? So, uh, so, me, me, fa, re, re, do, re, mi, fa, so, 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 me, 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 fa, re, 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 do, mi, so, so. <laughs> um, we have a wonderful human xylophone. What I found looking at how kids compose and what they do, sometimes they'll just write notes or we put aleatoric music, but we don't know what it sounds like. 
Now, you can use a human's element to translate to what, what they've done. Let all the kids try out what was composed. Let's see what needs to be tweaked. Let's edit it. Let's retry. Let's refocus. Let's rethink. This gives all our students a chance and time, all our kids with special needs, all our kids who need longer processing times, all our kids who need longer thinking times to make sense of certain structures gives everybody the time they need to come back to a project again and again and make the adjustments they need to make. It even addresses our kids on the gifted spectrum because they will have even more extensions of what they want to do with a composition that they keep returning to.